One of the challenges that we face every day now is that our country has begun making deals. And you hear it every day here. So one thing that I think is important for us all to understand today is we've got to stop making deals. I'm going to ask a question at the end of this quick statement. Uh, uh, Cheryl, I want to let you know that I've been honored to, uh, at the end of this all, to present you a flag. That flag was flown over the Capitol two years to the day on Saturday. That was an unusual day because at the behest of the speaker, the flag of the Capitol was flying at half-mast in honor of all of your family members. That doesn't happen very often. It is truly a unique event to have that happen, and it, it, it did so because the speaker knew the importance. So each of you will receive a flag flown that day over the Capitol, a day in which, in honor of your fallen, we flew at half mass. Now, a lot has been said about what the president did or didn't do, and I think I'll just leave that where it's been well said. But I'm going to ask a question, which is a question I think that all of us will go away with, because your, your children, your siblings, for some in the back, they died for a cause they believed in. They died for a code they lived by. I'm going to ask just one question that's been bugging me. Two years ago, had the Taliban become so strong we could not defeat them? Had ISIS become so strong we could not contain them? Had, had Al-Qaeda or Boko Haram become people that we had to compromise and negotiate? Or had we become so weak we could no longer defeat them? If the answer is yes, then there was a reason to leave Afghanistan the way we did. But we still stand with our allies in Europe against a threat from the East. We still stand in the Pacific against any aggression there. We still stand at the North-South Korean border with our colleagues in the Republican of Korea Army to prevent the kind of aggression that has occurred in the past. So I'd ask you, as people who have paid a sacrifice that we can only imagine in horror of losing a child, a loved one, should we quit standing because we are too weak or because the others are too strong? Or should we continue to stand up against aggression the way your loved ones did and paid the price for it? stand up for aggression we have to continue to stand up we just need to do it better my family continues to stand thank you for their service no add uh, to that to answer your previous question we're, we're strong where it counts we're or the, the boots on the ground you know there's a lot of all, all these families signed up. They continue to sign up. There's a lot of young men and women out there that continue to sign up. Unfortunately, it looks like where we've become weak are some of the decision makers. I concur with that also. And I also want to recant one statement I've made today. There was only six of us sent from the Army to help out those extra Marines. So... Uh, <laughs> It, you know, it doesn't take but a few good men, Paula. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you all for the, the answer that I knew I would get from the families who serve and whose children serve, and that is that they serve for a reason. They were raised to believe in this country. Thank you. I yield back.